A tradition returns. Three years in the making, Bob Boniface's Cars in My Yard. Obviously, we haven't done it in the past two years, but the world has finally woken up and we are free again. Free to display our cars on somebody else's backyard, eat their food, drink their beer, and do all sorts of things car guys do. Let's start over here with rally cars. As we are walking over there, huge invites. Do not complain if this is not fancy. This was not shot with three different cameras in three different locations in an airplane hangar with expensive cameras and super duper sound equipment. It's Brian Max behind the camera, a GoPro, and me recording the voice to my phone. So just be grateful you're getting this video. Anyway, let's start here with Ralph Gilles. He brought two cars. He has to show off, doesn't he? Uh, Lancia Delta Integrale HF. Now this, uh, we've already discussed this in great detail with that car over there. This is Bob's Delta Integrale. So rather than me go into the whole background of these cars, I will refer you to an episode we did where me and Bob drove this very car and he's the one that told you the history on A, the cars in general, as well as this specific car. So click on this link above and you can see me and Bob talk about these vehicles. And then we have two really special cars over here. They look more special than they really are. Uh, RS200 and Alancia Stratos, these were seminal in the rally world, basically moved their manufacturers, really leapfrogged their manufacturers forward. The cars you are looking at, yes, are copies, but damn, they are pretty, aren't they? Uh, then we have something here, fantastic. These are a special breed. They are Ferraris. Some people still bitch and moan about this, uh, but they are V6 Ferraris. I would argue uh, a Ferrari Dino, arguably one of the most pretty cars on the planet. Forget about Ferraris. And this is coming from a guy who is not a Ferrari guy. The big contention here is the engine. Yes, it is a V6. But in reality, how can you argue with the stunning, go, go, actually walk around that car for him, show him that car. How can you argue with the beauty of this vehicle and apparently people aren't arguing because these are worth a couple of hundred grand, anywhere from three to six hundred thousand dollars for a basically a Fiat engine Ferrari. Anyway, let's press on. And then we go to this. You know, th there's a lot to be said about a Mercedes convertible. There's more to be said about this Mercedes convertible. And I will tell you why. This is the S-Class. It was offered in two different models. It was offered with an inline six which it really couldn't get out of its own way. And then there's this, the 3.5 V8. These were a lot of money in the early 70s. Like you had to say no to a lot of other cars like Cadillac convertibles, which people bought by just the boatload as opposed to these things, because these were like almost double the price. But in time, these became very special cars because A, they were bulletproof reliable and B, they had style that has transcended from the early 70s. Like you look at this, and it's not a period car. Yeah, it's got period color, this brownish kind of exterior with a brownish kind of interior. But notice all the details on it. It literally is timeless in its design. Come around to the front, Brian. I mean, take a look at this. This was a design that came with a Fintail Mercedes in the early 60s. And even today, people use these things as dailies in places like Los Angeles. Car like this, when I first started looking at classic cars, they were probably worth sixty eighty thousand dollars something like that in that condition is probably worth somewhere about 180 to 225 thousand dollars so the market has really come to realize the value of something like this and then uh real quick we noticed the little k truck over there the mitsubishi k truck that's a new one here <clears throat> we got a gto uh some nice gm stuff here got a c5z06 got a last gen camaro you know we've talked about c8s but there's something about this yet I wanted to point out. Look at it, it's silver with black. You would never think that's a unique color the way it stands out. But this, it's such a clean look with the silver and the black interior. Brian, let's look at this other Corvette over here. Uh, I love me a C3 at some point. I'm gonna own me a C3, most likely a uh, very early C3, probably a 68, 69. I'm still struggling whether I want a T-top or a convertible, but how can one argue with a convertible? I personally wouldn't do the resto mod thing. I see what they were going for here. Very cool, but I would want the bone stock car because I've, it's literally 
the first car, cool car, I got a ride in. I remember when I was growing up, um, my, my dad had just passed away and my mom thought it would be a good idea to kind of distract me. So our neighbor, Mr. Saltarelli, I will never forget this man in my life, he had just bought one of these and it was a crappy old used car at that point, but a 427 1969 C3, I had no idea what I was in. A four speed manual, I thought literally I had climbed Mount Hebron and saw Jesus when I was behind the wheel of that car. Anyway, let's press on over here. Uh, I got some unique stuff over here. Take a look at this. Oh, wait a minute. Just a $100,000 Nissan passing by us here. These things have crazy jumped in value. Uh, you guys know Matt, Matt Farah. He bought one of these things for, I think, what did he buy his for, Brian? 50 grand, I 40 can't grand? I it was a deal. He, got, he stole the car and he sold it for like 80 and it still left money on the table. These, I know, you guys love these things. I respect them. I respect the hell out of what Honda was trying to do here. And me personally, I would want one with a Honda badge. But this just, it doesn't trip my trigger. And a, a quick backstory, you know, with one of our guests, Dave Kinney, who's supposed to be here tonight and I haven't seen him yet. Dave Kinney told me 10 years ago, buy every NSX you can get your hands on because they're going to go to the moon. And back then they were 25 grand. Brian, what do you think this car is worth? 100? This is, this oh, and is it's a T-top. It's a 97. Yeah, this is 100,000. So it's at least 100 grand. Yeah. So basically I missed the boat. Dave was right. Brian was right. But I just, I don't love them. You know what? You love them. Let me know in the comments below. True story. When I first moved to Los Angeles, uh, I wanted the classic car. And I figured oh, I'm going to be one of those people in LA that's going to daily a classic car. So I found this, almost this exact car. It was a 74, not a 73. So it had the bigger cow catcher bumpers. And it was being sold at a Saturn dealer. And I went in there. I'm like, ah, eh, you know, that's kind of neat. And I went home and called Dave Kinney. And I told Dave Kinney about it. He's like, well, how much did they want for it? They wanted something like eight grand. He says, tomorrow morning, you're going to be there when you're open and you're going to give them eight grand. I'm going to send you the money. We're buying the car. So sure enough, I turn up, they had already sold it. Fast forward to a year later, I'm at Barrett Jackson. I see the exact same car sold for $35,000. Then we press on to a new Cadillac here. Uh, I love me, you know, this, you can bitch all you want about the interiors of these cars. One of the most magnificent new cars to drive. Check out my full episode on that car. And then there's this. Hey, beautifully restored. <laughs> right next Ooh, door. Look, look at that. At this. I mean, someone has put some love into that car. Take a look at the granted the paint is significantly nicer than when it was new, but even the interior is down to stock. I love the rear tires. God, this is beautiful. Now, something interesting about these cars, these were very cold blooded. Like the reason why these you don't see many of them born from the factory with this engine, if you were trying to pick a car to daily back in the day and yeah take to the drag strip this car would be the most reliable thing to be driving that's why many people got the 440 over the 426. then we press on to its competition we just missed a beautiful goodwood green uh c2 corvette that left then we come over here let's take a look at a nice jaguar here brian smith uh chief design not chief designer he's a cadillac exterior design he has a coupe of this thing it is magnificent. Got a nice little Lotus Elan over there. That's beautiful. Another C8, Alfa Romeo. This, another magnificent car. Now that, that Grand Villa I showed you over there, let's say it's worth somewhere between 20 and 30 grand. This, I believe, is a 66 Impala Supersport. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You know, probably the oldest it is a 65. This car, probably 80 grand. The ship has sailed for these things. And notice, take a look at the interior, Brian. This has got the, sh the floor shift, the console. It's got the radio. I don't know if it was optioned like this when it was new. If it was, it's worth at, at least 80 grand. Then we'll press on next to it. It's kind of a competitor a little bit earlier. Ford Galaxy 500 XL. These were both performance luxury cars, the biggest engines you could get in the day. And this one also has the console and the radio and the electric windows, which were optional back in the day on those things. Punch into the windows so they can see the windows. And then another personal luxury car, come on over here. I, this one of the most stunning designs ever, 63 Riv. You guys know the old story. The idea was uh, Bill Mitchell wanted to make a car that uh, basically ripped off Bentley design. It was originally designed to be a Cadillac. Cadillac said, 
we don't want to rip off Bentley because we're a Cadillac and people are buying more Cadillacs anyway. So Buick took the design. And then we have an Alpha Junior Z. So what you must know here, we're kind of, we're in a zone here that there's a different kind of virus here at the Boniface residence. It's the Alpha virus. And that means that if, you're, if your last name is Boniface, you have to have owned at least five Alfa Romeos in a 10 year period. And uh, that Alfa Romeo is owned by his brother Ray. I believe this Alfa Romeo is owned by one of the family members. And as well as that one, I think it's one of his nephews owns that one. So you can see the Alpha disease, the virus of Alphas have, have spread significantly here. And I joke, but I can see why these guys are totally into it. Um, Ray, uh, he, he, he was, that was, that was Bob's father the most quintessential car guy on the planet. Like the man, he was a futurist, if you could think that. He went to school in Italy, he served in the war in Italy, and he saw these cars driving around. Like he actually was a doctor and he made house calls in cars like this. The man led an incredible life, but he saw these cars when they were just used cars, and that's when he started to buy these different cars and created a collection second to none. And the reason why we're having this party is because of Bob's father. He invented this party in rural Ohio, and now it's alive and well here in Michigan. Let's press on. Uh, I gotta point this out. 380 SCL, sadly not a 560, 380 SCL. When this design came out in 1979 for the 1980 model year of Mercedes, it introduced a more aero look for Mercedes, but notice they kept very purposeful, functional, clean design. Like in the US, you couldn't have the composite headlights, you had to have the sealed beam headlight. So they still kept as much composite as they could, but they still kept their signature uh, turn signals where they had the ridges and the ridges were there so snow wouldn't build up or ice wouldn't build up on the signals and it would literally go through the wind would push it off through going when the car would go down the road both in the front and the rear of the car then this one it literally had this rain gutter one of the first cars to have a rain gutter so as the wind was bringing the, 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 the rain over the car, it would keep it from going on the side windows. And then take a look at the inside of the car, super clean, purposeful design. Granted, this is the first Mercedes-Benz that had power seats in them. I should say power seats, not, remember the, the those of you that wanna argue about the grocer, they were pneumatic seats, these were electric seats. But this introduced the, the uh, show them the, uh, the door panel there. This introduced that metamorphic design where it looked like a seat and all you had to do was push the seat and everybody ripped off. Matter of fact, it was uh, Infinity that stole the design and Mercedes sued Infinity so they couldn't use the design any longer. Uh, this one they had, you know, in Europe you could have gotten it as a 280, uh, a 500, a 380. In the U.S., they only had the 380, which was the more fuel-efficient car. It was a terrible engine for Mercedes. They ended up changing it in 86 for a 560. Uh, Dodge GLH Turbo goes like hell. You guys know the story on this thing. I could point you to other episodes about these cars. I never really loved these vehicles. I can see why people get excited about them, and then there's infighting in the Shelby world about whether this is a Shelby and whether it's not a Shelby. Anyway, we press on. So uh, my date was supposed to be Mike Swears tonight. He was going to bring the, oh my God, look who it is. Where's your, where's your Jeep? I didn't bring a Jeep. You, didn't, you brought a Porsche? Nope, brought a Rambler. A Ram, well, that's still kind of in your wheelhouse. I get it. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Allen, the one and only Mark Allen. The reason why Jeep is killing it is because of this man right here. And he likes Porsches too. It's true. That's true. It's true, Mark. He also is a poet. Wait, is this yours? It is. Oh my God, a Rambler. See this guy. So I was, just, I was just saying how my date was supposed to, you know Mike Swears? Chief engineer of the Tundra, Sequoia, mm. and the Land Cruiser. Mm -mm. He's a major AMC guy. He has like oh. three of these. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So he would have loved he's to have. He's got a problem. He's got a, yeah. got a problem. You got a problem. Yeah, yeah, it's true. This is a hell of a build. What'd you do to it? Made it look better. It does look better. <laughs> and I don't like Dick Teague designs, but it does look better. Tried God, to make it look better. Did you even, you came up with that badge, didn't you? The 401? No, that's right. That's absolutely That's correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, I'm not an AMX guy. I just don't know these things. But it yeah. looks pretty. Nobody is. It's the nicest AMX I've ever seen in my life. That's the award you get. Thank that's you, all, Mark. That's all I get. That's all you get. <laughs> I'll see you later. Super talented designer, and the man has a great sense of humor. 
Anyway, uh, let's press. Oh, it's Phil Zach. Oh, how are you? He's trying to still feel film time. This guy, <laughs> no, he, he wants to get as much film time as he can. This is the man that I built a Hyundai show car with back in the day. We you spent keep going back to that. Because it was a fun time. I got to cut carbon fiber with this guy. Uh, I will see you tomorrow, right? Yes. Okay. He's got a private garage. We're going to go see his cool cars. All right, George. My okay. wife, Kate. Kate, nice to finally well, meet you. <laughs> you too. Their email We're address is now. shared. So I email his wife all the time. He thinks I'm hitting on his wife. <laughs> it all goes to spam, don't worry. <laughs> you guys know the whole history of these things. You guys know that I used to be a Lotus guy. Used to be. Not anymore. I get a lot of email direct messages from you guys, when am I going to drive the new Amira? I'm not, because I don't want to. I don't like Lotus anymore. Because I grew up, I want a Porsche now. But I still want one of these. And I'll tell you what I want to do with it, and then I'll tell you what Brian wants to do with it, and you guys vote. So I want to buy one of these, Series 1, so it has different bumpers, it doesn't have the wing on the back like this, smaller wheels, similar interior, not as like fancy and all leather tufted like this. But I want to rip the terrible Renault or French engine out of it and the terrible French transaxle out of it. And I want to put the sunroof from the Series 3 in it, completely restored so it looks bone stock with the mags from the James Bond. I want the number plate to say PWW305 in the front. But I'm going to go to a junkyard, buy me a 3.2 Boxster engine with a manual transmission. That is the perfect solution. Car weighs 2,000 pounds, 300 horsepower Porsche engine. How can you beat that? Brian has come up with the following idea. I can beat this idea. That idea. Walk around the cars and tell That idea is a Series 1 car, a little cleaned up aesthetically. Yeah. New suspension, brakes, tires, wheels, all that stuff. But K24 with a Honda 6 speed manual. Stupid idea. Brilliant idea. You know what? You guys get to vote. Idea. You guys get to vote. Do, should he? Should we do it with the right engine, as God intended, a German engine, or with this stupid Honda idea that Brian and his buddy, his race buddy, came up with? Let us know in the comments below. And then we're going to go and see something special over here. So V6, turbo, you know, all the pedigree, never was sold here in the U.S., new. There's not a lot of recognition for these things. And as a result, the classic car market's not crazy on them. But how cool is Show them the engine. That's pretty badass. Oh. Are we done with the French stuff yet? Okay, now we're done with the French stuff. Show them the interior of this. This is why I beat you guys up. Oh, This is that. why you need to get details done on your car. You've got the plaid with the red seat belts, Golf livery blue. How can you beat that? Not to mention how can you beat a GT3. This is magnificent. I, I don't want to call this the star of the show, but I want to call this the most special build of the show. This, let me introduce you to Hallucination. Hallucination looks like a 68 Charger, but it's not. Uh, this is a completely scratch built, I think a spaceship is the best way to describe it. Uh, this car was commissioned by Ralph Shield. And what it started life as is a 68 Charger, but they took it, this is not like a nut and bolt restoration, this is a reinterpretation of the car. Like for example, you look at the body panels, when I saw this thing in pictures, I thought it was just a flat black. Turns out it's not painted, that is carbon fiber. That is all bare carbon fiber. Every panel on the car is carbon fiber. Now this one, this is actual carbon fiber here, where this is carbon fiber over the original steel. So what they were doing, I'm going to try to get this and get this right because Ralph explained it to me. They started with the, pa the panels and they created basically bucks to get the shape of the carbon fiber. Then once they created the carbon fiber panels, they put them back on the car. So the main pieces that are still from the original car is effectively all this here. And then you look at some of the details on this. This is what, you, this is, you can clearly tell the customer was a designer. He designed the wheels on these to pick up from the original heritage design on the, on the original car. Then you look at the engine, some of the details on the engine. And here's the boss here. Did you see the lights? I, could you, can, can you put the lights on for us? This is the real owner of the car. Say hi. So we're gonna see the lights now. 
Thanks to Doris. Oh, oh look at this. Oh. oh my God, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. We're ready. So cool. Santa Maria, Madre de Dios. <laughs> yeah, I can see the hallucination we part. That every once in a while. Wow. wow. That's like the best feature when it opens. Yeah. That, that is, is unbelievable. So cool. Alrighty. So pick up on the Hellcat, but a different color. That's, and look at the fog light too, which is the original design. That's what's so magnificent about this, is these stunning details that were reinterpreted, but you can tell where they originally came from. And then take a look at the interior. All of this was done by, Ralph reinterpreted all of this. You can see a lot of current uh, Chrysler Dodge kind of inspiration, like obviously the shifter, some of the gauges here. But look at the detail. You can get the original dash, but this is the kind of stuff you would see from Porsche Exclusive Manufactura. And then you've got all the detail of carbon fiber, almost like you're matching the body color of an original B body Chrysler or Mopar car. And then look at, show them the pedals as well. Jesus. Hi, pleasure to meet you. How are you? That is stunning. We gotta get Ralph to let us drive this thing. <laughs> hey Ralph, I wanna take it on the track. Can you sort that out? And then, obviously we gotta show on the engine. Brian can tell you more about the engine. Thousand horsepower. Thousand. That's all you need to know. Jesus. Yeah. Thousand. I get, okay, so here's the question. Mm -hmm. Would you do this, or would you buy like a really fast plane? Because that's what you're talking about here. That, that's the realm of what this is well, in terms of how special it is. But this is Ralph, and this is what you do when you're Ralph. You know what? Kids, this is what happens when you work hard in life. You cannot just buy your own car. You can build your dream car. That's the great story about this. Go back and see some of our old episodes with Ralph, and you'll understand the amazing career this man has had. And we'll press on to a dual Ghia. This is one of... Probably the more beautiful cars we've ever seen in design. Basically a, a, a combination, this is a hybrid, so you've got American ingenuity underneath the vehicle with Italian Ghia body design. These cars were kind of, they started in the 50s and then they had a version that was in the 60s that really didn't have the same beautiful design. But look at the detailing, show them the detailing on the inside. Look, look at the stunning dashboard on that thing. God. Like you think about, look at the, the radio, the push buttons for the radio on the knob. You still have the high style that you saw in cars in the mid 50s, in a car that was really late 50s, early 60s in terms of the actual production of these cars. They didn't make many of them, they were very expensive. They were owned by people like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and guys like that. Everybody in the Rad Pack had a car like that. 512 Berlin and Boxer. We did a whole episode on these cars. Um, this one, beautiful. I love the two-tone color. Why don't we show them the color underneath here? And then come on over here. Well, that might be because you have that. Quintessential 70s Ferrari seats to the point where you can spec out your interior in a new Ferrari with the same seats. You guys have seen in our hangar, there's a F, F430 manual in the back of the hangar. It literally has the same seating pattern. It was spec'd out uh, custom from the factory. Let's see if we can say a quick hello to the uh, proprietor of the establishment. Bob, can we say a quick hello? Hello. This is the man who puts it all on and we are thankful for him to put this party on. Good Pre one, huh? Appreciate you having us here. We're gonna now show him uh, Adam's car. Excellent. Yes. Thank you, man. Appreciate having Motorman, us. always good to see you. Always good seeing you. And then come on over here. That's one of Bob's cars. Interesting thing about this car. Come on over here, Bob's brother. So notice the steering wheel is in the wrong place. Why don't you show them the steering wheel? So Bob uh, has a car that was owned by Peter Sellers. So this car started its life in England, uh, and then it went into the collection. I believe Bob's father first bought the car, and then he bought the car from his father. So now it's part of his whole Alpha and Ferrari collection, which lives over there. And then let's go and see something. Shall we end the show on something really big? Yeah. I think we need a big, a big grand finale. It's exactly what we need.
So we drove here in a 2022 Mercedes-Benz S-Class, which has a total length of 208 inches. This, what do you say, 72? Yes. 72 Imperial that has a length of 235 inches. And the coupe, this being the sedan, they both have the same length, whether it was four door or two door. Walk around the car and show them the design. So uh, I, I can tell you who owns this car because this man is also on YouTube. Uh, Adam, I think it's Rare Classics and Customs or something like that. I'll put a link to his channel uh, in the, in the uh, description below. But Adam does a great channel uh, of classic cars, but Melee's era cars. He's not looking for Lamborghinis or Ferraris or Alfa Romeos. He wants to tell you stories on, uh, I'm not making this up, 1985 Oldsmobile 98s with 30,000 original miles, or Bustleback Seville's, and he gets the original designer there. He actually did interview Bob Lutz like I do. That's how we met each other, through Bob Lutz. Great guy, and the other thing about Adam, he's the enemy. He was the bean counter at General Motors, but now he's become a car guy and he owns a bunch of these cars, so he's a great dude. Go check out his channel. I think that's everything, Brian. Yeah, I think that's everything. So uh, we are gonna get back to the party and we're gonna have uh, some cigars. So until we see you in the next episode, oh, before I say that actually, thank you for joining us. Because this is a special opportunity, wanted to share it with you. Do you wanna see more of this stuff where it's like literally run and gun kind of thing? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And I also wanna say a huge thank you to the cameraman, Brian Max. Uh, you can follow him on all his socials, which is his name, Brian, M-A-K-S-E, on all the socials. Now, until we see you in the next episode, bis später.